take that challenge on and really to offer offer our city and our community something that is different. Welcome back everybody, Richard Baker here with my friend Peggy from Grassroots. Um, an amazing story about a young executive chef who has opened up a very unique place here in, in Hong Kong that serves only plant-based foods. Um, we speak about her journey, what drives her, how she stays humble, and thank you very much. The food is amazing. <laughs> Peggy, thank you so much for meeting with us. Thank Tell you. me a little about yourself as an individual and then also grassroots, which we are sitting in here. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Peggy. I'm the executive chef and founder of Grassroots Pantry, also a managing director. Um, we are a five-year-old uh, vegan, vegetarian, uh, organic restaurant. We source as much as possible locally, um, and over 90% of our ingredients are certified organic. I've been an avid um, sustainable consumer or conscious consumer for the past 17 years and uh, that's my lifestyle so for me it's about how do I balance you know my food intake and um, nutritionally but then also um, create food that is fun and interesting and innovative. How does that work in a city like Hong Kong where consumption is at a whole nother level? Why did you choose the city to get started? My challenge was really to take on um, what the city needed, um, the city that I grew up in, the city that I know um, and that I've worked in for many years and uh, take that challenge on and really to offer offer our city and our community something that is different. And how did you come into this? Yeah, um, well, along with what I was doing in hotels, in corporate, um, I was always on the back of my mind really wanting so badly to um, do something about the food industry and what was, or raise awareness about what was going on in the food industry. So back then, um, 12 years ago, was when I first read an article on Gourmet Magazine, that was in 2005. And that was the first article that had actually showed me what food was and where food came from. And that was the first time I've heard about Monsanto and genetically modified organisms. And so that really led me to do my research. Um, so throughout university in Switzerland, I was also continuously doing my research and figuring it out what was going on with the meat, meat industry, watching guerrilla films. Um, so it was always in the back of my head, um, even though I was working in corporate, uh, I would be talking to my colleagues, hey, you know, they would ask me why I vegetarian and I would right. tell them like do you know that you know how cows are actually raised these days you know mm -hmm. they're being pumped with RBGH growth hormones do right, you know right. any of this no and it's scary yeah. why didn't you just become an activist for you know humane society yeah. uh, you know, like an existing NGO why didn't you go that route why why go into uh, a restaurant business right um, I <laughs> I really thought that I was going to leave the FM, uh, leave the industry for good and go into academics and go into social work, um, which is very normal for a lot of people. But I knew that I had my passion was really and my career. You know, everything that I've honed for 12 years was in food and beverage, and my craft is culinary. And it's hard to leave all of that when, when, you know, it's kind of like a part of you. Right, so right. I decided that after my eat, pray, love moment of traveling mm -hmm. to Bali and India and everything, I really just felt like there's a way for me to do this and I'm, I can combine you know, my love for culinary mm -hmm. and running restaurants with my passion and activism right, right. for sustainable agriculture and combine that together and make Grassroots Pantry my first business as something that is a more of a social entrepreneurship base. When you set this up, I mean, the entire menu is completely vegan. Um, what were some of the core principles when you said, I'm gonna build this restaurant yeah. you had to adhere to? Yeah. Um, and how challenging, or what, what was the opportunity, what were the challenges of, of sticking to those principles? When we, we, when we opened Grassroots five years ago, we weren't uh, opening it 
to become a vegan restaurant. It was only over the years and last year was when I decided after watching Cowspiracy mm. was when I real <laughs> not realized but I really decided that I, you, you knew, know, but you like that exactly, was it, right? exactly. Okay. It was just like okay. getting that push in, and these food documentaries are so crucial mm. to getting people to just you know do something. You know, plastic oceans as well. You know, sure, sure, sure. So I really, um, with that, we I decided to get rid of all of the dairy. Not that we used a lot anyway. I just said like we'll get rid of it overnight. Yeah. 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 Um, I think many times when you're uh, an, a restaurant operator. Mm -hmm and a chef with a lot with a big ego you do what you want to do but right. you fail to see what the market wants and uh, if I made those decisions overnight and I made all these like funky stuff all raw all you know uh, cold foods and you know cold press all very like too hippie and stuff yeah I think it would deter people from trying because um, when they think Vegan, I mean, to me, a fallback is like, oh, tofu. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, there's some preconceived <clears throat> notions you have to break through. Exactly. So, how did you, like, what was your process for once you knew that that was a problem? How did you then create a menu or how did you look at that part of the business? Right. In order for us to get our consumers to, our customers to really feel like they're a part of that experience, mm -hmm. I wanted to create a menu that was something that they could recognize. Okay. So let's say if I were to make a Thai dish, I would make it as authentic as possible, but give it those grassroots tweaks, which is to make it plant-based, superfood laced, um, all wholesome foods, 100% um, organic, you know, all of that. And so when they eat it, they, they're like, oh, I remember this flavor, oh, I remember that. But actually, it's something that is so much more healthier than what you would normally get. Mm. Yeah. So, like one of the examples is a popcorn chicken that we do, which is yeah. super popular here. Um, it's my memory from you know middle school. After school, we'd go to KFC and buy these you know <laughs> buckets of popcorn chicken and pop it in our mouths. Right. And so the taste and the memory and the flavor and the fragrance, all of that, just made me realize that I can re recreate that with. Yeah an ingredient called hedgehog mushroom. Okay. Just batter it, toss it in galangal powder, and there you go. And, you and go. so everyone who comes here, they eat it, they're like, this is just like chicken, you know? So, yeah. but are you trying to fool them? Like, the Beyond Burger, it's actively trying to fool you yeah. so that you'll just make the switch more readily. But how much for you is just looking at the food and going, this just makes amazing food, but the flavors speak for themselves, and hopefully, right. like, the, the tikka that I just had, like, Fucking amazing. <laughs> um, how much is just you looking at food going, this is what I can do and I know that this will be amazing. And yeah. how much is, you know, people like popcorn chicken, yeah. I'm going to create it, I'm going to fool everybody yeah. and they're going to keep coming back. Yeah. I wouldn't use the word fool though, I'm proposing an alternative. Okay. Yeah. So actually we have a catering arm called the, the Alternative Caterer. Okay. And what I'm doing is really proposing you a different option mm -hmm. as what you would normally <laughs> have and still have it taste just as good. Mm -hmm. you know, you, your experience won't change whatsoever. You can still bring your friends who are meat eaters here and everyone can have their own meals, different style of food. We can have Indian, you know, Thai, Italian, Chinese, all on the same table right. at the same time. But you'll, you'll all experience something that is memorable. What are, the same, what are the best ways for you to break through the noise of what's happening here in Hong Kong in the food and diet? How do you get your message out? How do you attract new consumers that are outside your, your friend circle, the people that you're actively going out? Because you need the masses to come here yeah. to make sure that you have a stable business. So yes. is, it, is it Facebook? Is it events? Is it speaking? Mm -hmm. Is it everything? And what's worked well for you yeah. as a storyteller? When we were smaller, social media definitely worked. But now that we're at this stage of the business, um, our public relations team really does help give us a great push. Okay. But most importantly, um, I think it's the messaging. It needs to be consistent, right? So no matter which channel you use, the messaging needs to be consistent. Um, so uh, we, we do this thing called the Collectus Table. Um, it's an initiative we started a year ago. And it, the whole idea is to get you know, the restaurant is great as a platform to touch to the community and the, our guests, change the ways that they think. So most of our guests who come here, they're, they're not vegetarian vegan. 
Um, but the collective's table is really to tap in within, infiltrate within the industry mm. so that we can get the suppliers, the chefs, you know, and the big restaurants, the corporates to right, start right. changing their systems, <laughs> system change. Yeah. So what we do is challenge them to cook plant-based um, over one special dinner and part of the proceeds goes to a certain cha charity and uh, we create a lot of buzz, a lot of coverage for them because everyone's talking about you know plant-based food now, vegetarian yeah. and putting more like wholesome foods on your menu. So we kind of help, help them as well tweak their uh, their image um, mm -hmm. to the public and vice versa you know um, so we're doing it glo globally and uh, we've been able to successfully change um, some of the chefs like not purposely but that they are still inspired yeah. yeah yes through through that pop-up mm -hmm. through the collaboration mm -hmm. they've been able to feel so inspired that they will change you know maybe the percentage percentage of plant-based versus meat food yeah. uh, dishes uh, have shifted yeah what are the big challenges that you face, like day to day, or from the, your vision's perspective? Like, what are the challenges that you're facing, and how do you get through them every day? How do you how do you wake up and be like, all right, look, we got all these problems, and I gotta get through it. Well, the biggest problem in this industry, no matter where you are, big corporate hotels or you know small startups, um, he, people. Mm. <laughs> we are a human intensive human based industry where everything is based on communications um, uh, so you know that is always a problem and we we have a massive shortage of qualified skilled workers in this industry right now because no one wants to go into food and beverage no one wants to go into hospitality yeah so that's one thing um, so how do you fix that um, robots <laughs> right? like. oh gosh um, I would how I would fix that is really just to go back internally and say how do we become better um, how do we attract quality quality staff mm -hmm. we have to be role models for what we do so if we're we we say all all of these things as in like we do all of these things but we're not really good with our work ethics then even if I attract great people and they would see us as uh, they're just you know it's just all poster okay, messaging okay. right so I first of all make sure that my team the ground team the skeleton team is strong and they are you know their ethos is exactly as mine mm. that if I say segregate your ways you have to segregate your ways okay. and that has taken a lot of time you know yeah. because two years ago it wasn't like this there were a lot of chefs who came in and there were multiple shortcuts you know right right so it takes time to build um, so that's one way uh, that we're tackling um, how, why how do I wake up in the morning and feel you know 100% to go to work and you know continue what I do um, I see everything with a bigger picture and the bigger picture here is we need to do something about the system here. What inspires you about the food sector right now? What gets me the most excited is really to be a part of that system change. So because I've worked in food and beverage for 17 years, it's really knowing the industry from inside out yeah. and knowing how to fix it or how to change it. Of course, I don't know everything around right. the world, but I'm starting in Hong Kong. So how do you measure your success? How do you measure impact? How do you ground Good yourself? Good question. <laughs> People have their conceptions about you uh, at certain levels, but to me it's all about my confidence within and I don't need someone else to tell me uh, who I am or whether I'm doing well or not. Um, as long as I feel confident and comfortable with the correct feedback and being open to accepting feedback, staying humble, um, with humility um, and then just focusing on doing better than I have before the previous day then I know I've done my job well. What advice would you give to a young woman about you know how to, how to just be yourself get it done? Yeah um, one of the things the words that was used at, on a chef's table I don't know if you watch, watched it uh, by chef Nikiyama and she uses the word it's a Japanese word called kuyashi which means um, to allow the negative energy that people give you um, drive you to 
prove them wrong. Okay. Yeah. Or, I mean, that sounds reactive, but actually, if you have that mentality all the time, yeah. um, it can become proactive and it can become a part of you. So, let any doubt, anything that is negative that enters you, be produced back as something productive and positive.